Our wingers didn't cut in an awful lot. We had wingers who crossed the ball ah, and we, 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 had physic, we had a physical presence, so the, which Guidetti is, is in the box. So the game's always stretched because the wingers were hugging the, the byline, the sideline, sorry. And that, that comes, they're not, they're coming in. So but that, that leads in. back to the point that I was making at the very start, that we ju- we need wingers to be wingers. Because ultimately, we every as you say, you make a good point. When when it comes to these games, everyone, all the all the wingers cut in. McBarrick does it. Forrest does it a lot as well. They all cut in. Forrest done it constantly. Yeah, he had to have Matthews going in the overlap for that ball to go out wide because he just was not going to go out wide. Oh, oh, I mean, I think uh, was uh, during the, the the Thistle game and I think the Motherwell game, he had one or two chances where he, he actually just took on the fullback, beat him. And you're like, why aren't you doing that? Like constantly, he's always cutting in just the the, the sort of semicircle bit just outside the box. He's always there or thereabouts when he picks the ball in and he drives. And as you say, Kieran, it's it, there are too many people there. One one thing on on that, I was reading this article, but it was Tim Shelwood's column in the Telegraph, and he was talking about something that I kind of well, I think we all probably thought is how. Tottenham made a conscious effort to mould Gareth Bale into uh, like Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, so model everything on Ronaldo. Yeah. And you could see in the way the guy moves and touches a ball. And his diet and, and how he does pretty, start to do uh, weights. And it's pretty much the exact same. But apparently he doesn't do weights. He never pu- he never pushed a weight in well, the training. Well, then he's juicing then. He's taking steroids ev- because he's he done, body. He done everything out on the pitch. So everything, rather than going in on a weight machine, he was just constantly running, doing sprints, doing things out in the pitch. But anyway, one of the things he was talking about was when um, they played into Milan, and obviously he came, was it 4-0 down, he came on and scored three. Ah, uh, phenomenal. Uh, second half. But they were talking about how they purposely got him to, because he was a winger, <coughs> Spurs fans loved him as a winger, used to sing about him in one of the songs uh, for Gareth Bale. It was all about how he was this amazing winger. And they made the decision that they wanted him to do what Ronaldo does and cut inside and run diagonally at the two central defenders um, because they're not used to it. Um, And that was like a deliberate thing that they started that that kind of... Game at half time, he said, "No, you run it. You run it them too," and he, he kept going and obviously developed. Um, but it is one of those things. I think Forrest is going that way now as well. That I mean, at the weekend, as I said, I don't remember him going out wide, and yet he used to do that. And it's constantly trying to cut inside and run it, which is fine, which is great. But it's just as you say, sometimes you need a winger to stay out and be a winger. Do the DDI d- 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 get? Get to the byline, get across. And I think the issue with James Forrest is, and, and, and I'd say I issues may be the wrong word, but you know James Forrest isn't an athlete. James Forrest is a tricky winger, using the fact he's small and the fact he does have, you know, he has the ability to beat someone. James James Forrest could never be molded to be Gareth Bale. No, 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 no. And I'm not. And I'm not. I know you. I know your point in your Messi. Could he be molded into Messi? Yeah, but Messi still beats people and takes people on. The difference is Messi is. The greatest player of all time. <laughs> um, I think with a little bit of hard work. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, I think he's like Scott Brown all over again. He's like uh, Aaron Lennon at Spurs, I think, for Forrest. Pace, always cut outside, but then Lennon done that. He came inside, but as you say, he's full of trickery. I mean, one time Forrest mine second half, he, he dribbled past a couple and got himself right in the edge of the box and had a shot, but I think it was blocked. But he done so well, such a good run and passed a couple of players. But I, I thought when he got taken off, I thought that's just deliberate. Like, just get him off. He's played 60 minutes or 70 minutes. I'm, I'm happy with how... Uh, He's d- been deter- managed d- well. D- deter- well, I think, do you know what? I think that's a key point. Um, Neil Lennon was always quick. And I'm not getting to Neil Lennon because Forrest was a key player for him. But he was always quick to bring him back. And he clearly, so many times, brought him back way too early. Dyla, maybe to an extent, has the luxury of ne- not relying on Forrest to keep him out of the team. But we're now starting to have a reliance on him because he's a good player. 
Um, you know, we, we criticised Forrest in this podcast before because he was playing so poorly. But if someone's playing poorly, you know, they deserve criticism. You can't, you know, continually defend so other than you with Scott Brown. <laughs> Um, on great form just now. <laughs> I'm only joking, just shut up, boys. And always has been. Um, but yeah, I mean, w- talking about Scott Brown, we had a question on Twitter from Martin Friel at Odge1983. Uh, the first hi, question. Hi, Martin. Hi, Martin. Hi, Martin. Who is the best Scottish player to have played for Celtic since McStay? He then very quickly adds, jumps in before we can answer. In fact, that's too easy. The answer is Lambert. Who's the best Scottish player since Lambo? Aid McGeady. Can we count him since he plays for the Irish national team? It's I'm not, just saying. I'm it's, just saying. it's not about who you represent. It's where you're. He's, he's Scottish. He's Glaswegian, and the answer is Aid McGeady. Or Sean Maloney. Sean think. Maloney. Yes. Sean Maloney's pretty good. Scott Brown. I'm here on Scott Brown. <laughs> 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 nope, not here. That. Nope. <laughs> too too early, maybe, but potentially Craig Gordon. Maybe prick. I was about to say that. Uh, I, I think Gordon's been phenomenal, but I would never. Oh, he's you know he's not been here long enough for us to. Uh, he probably won't be here long enough as well. Do you know what I mean? Years. Uh, yeah, I just mean you know. I don't think he would take a player to run, run away. No, no, I don't mean that. I just mean he might only be around for four or five years. And ah, okay, fair enough. Four or five years. Four or five years. <laughs> just the four or five years. <laughs> what you want? No, but look, but like Paul McStay, Aidan McGeady, Sean Maloney, they were all here for an extended period of time is what I'm saying. And I, I do realise now that's stupid, so please wipe that <laughs> point from the board. No, I, I love keeping it. in the podcast. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Louis? Uh, probably Maloney. I'm trying to think who else, but probably go with Maloney. They had moments where he could be... Fantastic, and then games where it was very frustrating. But I, I, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, Barry Robson. I thought he was only here for a short period of time, but impact. what he did, and the same with Paul Hartley. Paul Hartley started quite poorly at Parkhead. I think first we signed him in January, and for the first six months he didn't do much. But the two seasons after that, it was terrific. Um, I also think we get rid of them way too quickly. Yes, um, Robson's clearly still doing a job after. After he left us, yeah. Anybody else? Be th- that's the thing. I mean, that's well, it's not going to be. It's not going to be a goalkeeper other than Gordon. I can't think of any left or right backs who have been. McManus and Caldwell. No, not, not, no. From, not from nobody. Kennedy could have been. Ah, we can't keep dwelling on Kennedy. Um, um, and then there's not going to be any strikers. So you're looking at midfielders, and I think we've probably touched on most of the players since Lambert that have been. Yeah, I mean, top, top drawer. But I think we landed on Scott Brown, so... <laughs> <laughs> we landed on Scott Brown. Terrific. That's what you'd love to do, because you are gay for him. Uh, man of the match? Johansson? We settling on Johansson as man of the match, or...? I heard man of the match, but there was not I just mean our man of the match. Yep. 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 Man of the match, Johansson. Oh, Mulgrew. We didn't mention Mulgrew. Uh, I think Chris <laughs> Armani uh, is actually at the Manic Street Pictures concert. Um... And he still tweeted in to say Maldini rules. Uh, I believe there's a slight bit of sarcasm to that. Um, but, um, yeah, all joking aside, you'd be looking for that team to continue. Maybe with, you know, Denayer coming back, obviously replacing Ambrose. But you'd be looking at that... Uh, well, I, I think I heard something, was it yesterday or today, that I don't think Dyla's put out a consistent team yet. Two games in a row. He's not put the same team on the starting eleven. So there's, all, there's been always been a change. Always been a change. I think that said. I think that said. There's not been two games where he's played the same. Well, we've had a lot. He always chops and changes the wingers. There's always a different winger starting. Yeah. Well, he's going to make changes for the game during the week, isn't he? All the reserves will be going over. And that's a good that. point. How do we think he should go? Get youngsters out there. Well, I mean, if talking about tiredness with the Thistle game, then uh, this is a perfect time to give like a couple of the most of the first eleven that we we think are the first eleven. Although in saying that, there's no way you, can, you can't, can't give a defence off. <laughs> there's no defenders to use up. There is. So you can't put all the young boys out there. So you're gonna have to. Nah, you don't want to get humiliated. Dial hinted that at that. Point. He said I might put a few people out, but. Daniel You've Fisher got to maintain some sort of consistency, which I think back is fair four enough, will stay, b- b- back five. I think will stay the same. To be honest, I think it's cool start. I think he, I think he protects Gordon a few times, so he can. Mm. I think that I will. Probably I think right, uh, you know Scott Brown 
just doesn't want to be dropped, which is admirable. Um, Bitton's just come into the team, so play him, just so him and Brown get a bit of consistency. Put Commons in for Johansson. Commons in for Johansson, perfect. Uh, maybe even leave Forrest out as well, just right. any unneeded Tony things. McGregor in there. Give him Tony Evan McGregor. Yep. Uh, and up front, would you go with Griffiths? Skipovic. Give Skipovic a, ch- a try. Well, you said he wants a chance. So you could even put you stuff. could even put Griffiths on the left. You know, um, Skepovic up front, and then go from there. Uh, I, I think we've picked a good team. Right? I think uh, we'll go with that. We d- we don't want obviously Tyler directly. Aye. We 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 know that you know this is an it's almost a nothing game. But for me, this going to sound lame, but there are no nothing games for Celtic. It's a European performance. If nothing else, it's another notch on the coefficient. If we did get a result, so that's always something we're looking towards. Um, so and it may I don't I know in the Champions League each point is worth an actual cash slum. I'd imagine it's similar in Europa League, but I've not actually pennies, checked that. Ah, it pennies rather than millions. At the same time, balls, lads. Any, yeah. any result's going to make headlines. If 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 we get gubbed, it's going to be bad press. Yeah. Dialer doesn't want we, that. So yeah, we don't want it. we don't want that. At the same time, and we've talked about putting out players that aren't necessarily getting games. I think that's worthwhile. Um, I think you can take that little risk and, you know what, see if we didn't get a great result. Fair enough. If we try out Skepovic. Yeah, it, it, do you know what this sort of situation has reminded me of? Uh, a couple of Scotland games from when Strachan first took over. When we went to Croatia away, with, it was a nothing game in terms of you know result for us and we ended up playing really well because they had a freedom to play and you know they actually played really well. So hopefully... Um, Hopefully we get a result. Hopefully there's a you know a, a good performance in there. Um, anyway, I mean, is there any other points you want to make? I mean, it's actually I want to bring up the point that you made, Louis. Um, it's a good point, wasn't it? Always. Um, just one second. It's about uh, Craig Gordon. Um, so Craig Gordon came out and basically said that there was a meeting between after after the game. Uh, I'll just read some of the quotes, right? Because um, I thought I, I thought it was really quite interesting. Um, Craig Gordon on Celtic's dressing room inquest. We were disappointed we didn't finish Motherwell off. Okay, so just some of the quotes. There's a good atmosphere in the dressing room. They, they are, there are guys who will have a go. Nothing over the top. It wasn't a row or anything, but a good exchange of views. It's a good attitude to have. Even though we won the game, we weren't happy at the end. We were disappointed we didn't finish the game off. Another game we could have had a few... Virgil van Dijk had a few words. Stephen Johansson wasn't happy. We hadn't finished the job off earlier. There was a few, but that's good. Uh, you know, you you took this the the kind of tone of what in, in which it was written um, by the kind of mainstream media was negative. Yeah. Um. To me, that's positive. That's you know, that's striving for perfection. Um. Upset at the fact that you know there also is the issue. We we could have conceded a late goal, which would have you know. A, Two, two dropped points, and at this point, we really want to start pulling away. I, sen- I mean, essentially, that headline is players talk about football game and changing room. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. But when you read it the way it's written, it appears that, that sounds to me as if it's it's negative. Game. But I'm, I'm a lot of them are. Do you think it's an you know it's a positive thing or a negative? I think thing? it is. I mean, it, it shows that they they always want to do better. They always want to have the not the perfection, but they know themselves there that they had a good chance that they could have dropped two points when they were in such a commanding uh, position and they were totally dominating the game. But just down to that uh, lack of um, taking their chances, can't even think the word. <laughs> clinical <laughs> lack of being clinical could have cost them, and that's the thing that they can't have. Because I, I think that I think it's always banned on. He's like, oh, when, he, when we're in the lead, he wants to kill the game, but they never killed the game. And that could have backfired on them. Yeah. Um, as long as it's not directed at people. So if it's like, you know, they were getting go there, his face because he missed a couple of chances. Because to be perfectly honest, every single person, not every single person, but a good a few of them, each had a chance. I think your hands another chance, four had chances. So it's not just one person to really blame. It's always like, and they said it wasn't an argument. It was just kind of laying down the feelings and stuff like that. But uh, it shows that they are. They care. They're, 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 they're not together. Yeah. Do you, you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And as you say, it's kind of. I think I was phrased relatively negatively as well in the media. You've, essentially, we've got a game there that we could have won by substantially more that we've only won 1 0. 
I don't think there's, you know, that's going to happen. But at the end of the day, the results what counts, especially coming off seven, going on eight victories in the league in a row. Um, yeah, just but, I, so, I found as well throughout the seasons, there's games where 